Okay, now for question number five from M1, June 2015, um, International A-Level at Excel paper. I've had a request for me to answer this question. It's about um, velocity time graphs, speed time graphs. A car travels, or a car traveling along a straight horizontal road it takes 170 seconds to travel between two sets of traffic lights at A and B which are 2,125 meters apart. The car starts from rest at A and moves with a constant acceleration until it reaches a speed of 17 meters per second. The car then maintains this speed before moving with a constant deceleration coming to rest at B. The magnitude of the deceleration is twice the magnitude of the acceleration. Sketch in the space below a speed time graph for the motion of the car between A and B and find the deceleration of the car. Okay, so let's do the first, let's do the sketch of the speed time graph. Okay, so it starts at rest and it reaches a speed of 17 meters per second. This is the speed in meters per second. Okay, and this is the time in seconds. All right, um, constant acceleration, that's going to be like a straight line. And then it maintains this speed for a little while before moving with constant deceleration coming to rest at B. Now the magnitude of the deceleration is twice the magnitude of the acceleration. So the slope of this is going to be steeper than the slope of that. In fact, twice as steep. Okay. So this is going to be at, um, how long does it take? It says 170 seconds. So this is 170 seconds altogether. Okay. So that's all the information that we can put in the speed time graph, I guess. Yeah. So that's the maximum speed it reaches. That's the time it takes altogether, and this has to be steeper than that. The deceleration is steeper than the acceleration because it's twice the magnitude. Okay, then it says find the deceleration of the car. So this is part A done. So now we've got to find the deceleration of the car, which is part B. Now to find the deceleration of the car, we know that the total distance traveled, they told us, I think 2,125 meters. So the total distance traveled is equal to 2,125 meters. That means the area of this trapezium must be 2,125 meters. That's the area under this trapezium. The area under a speed time graph tells you the total distance traveled. Now, what we know is um, that this, one second, this, this section here, there's a relation between this section and that section. Because if the deceleration is twice the magnitude of the acceleration and this accelerated to the same speed that this decelerated from to zero, so this went from zero to 17, this went from 17 to zero, if the magnitude of the deceleration here is twice, that means it takes half the time, then it takes this. So this will take twice the time to reach 17 meters per second um, and then it takes the, for this to go from 17 meters per second to zero. So the time it takes for this acceleration must be twice the time it takes for this deceleration. So let's call this little section here x. And let's call this little section, this will have to be 2x because the time here is twice the time there because it's deceleration. What does the deceleration mean? It means, um, you know, how long it takes for the speed to decrease. Okay, the rate of change of speed. So if the rate of change of speed here is twice the rate of change of speed there in terms of magnitude, then that means it takes less time for it to slow down. So this will be twice as long it takes for this to reach 17 meters per second squared, 17 meters per second, um, um, as the time for this to reach 17 meters per second is twice uh, the time it takes for this to go from 17 meters per second to zero. Okay, I hope that's that's clear. So that means this section here, 
the time for this section here would be 170 minus 3x. Okay, that's the time, call this x, that must be 2x, and that must be what's left over, which is 170 minus 3x. And all of these reach 17 meters per second. So basically, the area of all of this is going to be, so this 170 minus 3x, that section here. So this whole thing is going to be um, 170. So the area of this whole thing is, is going to basically be 2125. So let's take the area of the whole trapezium, which is the distance between the parallel sides, which is 17, divided by 2, times the sum of the parallel sides. Okay, the sum of the parallel, parallel sides is going to be um, 170 plus, and then you've got 170 minus 3x. And that is, so that's the distance between the parallel sides divided by 2 times the sum of the parallel sides, and that should give us 2125. That should be the area of that trapezium. So let's then see what that gives us. We're going to have um, 17 times, and this is going to be 17 plus 17, which is 34, so 340 minus 3x equals, and I've just multiplied by this by 2, that will be 4000. 250. Let me just confirm that case. I made a silly mistake, but I'm pretty sure it is. 2125 times 2. Yep, I've just multiplied both sides by 2 to get rid of that, basically, to get rid of that 2 there. Okay, so you've multiplied both sides by 2. Then I can divide both sides by 17 to get rid of this 17 to make life easier. So I have 340 minus 3x is equal to 4250 divided by 17 okay so I take this and divide that by 17 and that gives me 250 so I have 340 oops I have 340 minus 3x is equal to 250 come on or something here 250 so I can say 340 minus 250 is equal to 3x. Okay, so it's 340 minus 250, I think that's going to be 90. 340, 340 minus my answer, 90. So x is equal to three, uh, 30. So x is equal to 30 seconds. Okay, so x is 30 seconds. So I know that this is 30 over here. So um, that must be 60, and that must be 170 minus 90, which is going to be um, 80. 80 plus 90 is 180, yeah. So we don't need to know that, actually. All we need to know is the deceleration of the car. So the deceleration of the car, we know it took 30 seconds to go from 17 meters per second to zero. So the deceleration is going to be the change in y over the change in x, which will be 17 over 30. So therefore we can say the deceleration is going to be the change in speed over the change in time, which is going to be 17 over 30. And that will give us our answer. So we have 17 divided by 30 which gives us 0 0.56666. So 0 0.567. 0 0.567 to 3SF. 0 0.567 meters per second squared. Okay, we don't have to put negative because, of course, it's a deceleration, which means it's a negative acceleration. So there we have the answer to this question number five. Okay, so the key for this question was to realize that if the magnitude of the deceleration is twice the magnitude of the acceleration, then it will take half the time to go from 17 to 0 than it took to go from 0 to 17. Okay, and that's the key for this question. Thank you for watching.